Okay. Um, quick one. Not really a rant, but sort of ish, maybe. I don't know. Um, basically, uh, got a message of a guy today who asked me to comment on a thread uh, that was talking about insulin use. Somebody suggested it as a pre workout to improve pumps which to me is absolutely fucking ludicrous. Yes, you will get a better pump with insulin, but that's not really a reason to be using it. Um, and then a general conversation went in that someone else claimed that uh, there's no detrimental effects to using insulin. Uh, it's a diabetic medication, so it can't do any harm, etc., etc. all this sort of shit. And as most of us know, you OD on insulin and, and you can be putting your life at risk. You're right, you've got to be pretty fucking dumb to actually die of a diabetic induced coma or an insulin induced coma, but not so dumb to start to lose your faculties behind the wheel of a car. Been there, done that one. Um, you may not go full hypo, but you can start to lose, just get groggy and not really function correctly. You're behind the wheel of a car and there you go. You haven't died of an insulin overdose, you, but you have definitely died because you took insulin. You died because your car went into a wall at 60 mile an hour. Anyway, getting off subject here. Now, when we take hormones, we are all aware that our natural systems shut down and we are all aware that there is the risk that those natural systems don't restart afterwards. This is why we use PCT and that uh, inevitably for the vast majority of users, colour keeps going on this. Anyway, for the vast majority of users, inevitably what's going to happen is we're going to fuck us balls and need TRT. But what we don't seem to appreciate is that that process happens in the body with pretty much anything that we put in that is a naturally occurring hormone. So, T3, when we put in T3, our own production of T4 stops or is severely reduced. Um, now, the thyroid is quite robust, uh, and generally speaking, it does recover fine with the removal of T3, but it doesn't always. And I have seen people that have had thyroid issues post T3 use, but it is rare, but it does happen. Now, insulin. Your pancreas produces insulin. Obviously, when you start using insulin, your pancreas stops producing insulin because it doesn't need to because there's shitloads there. That means that your pancreas shuts down in that essence and or at least is. Um, fucking brain's gone fat, brain fart. So its function is reduced. There you go. Um, now, there's no guarantee that it'll all go back to normal when you stop using insulin. The other issue with insulin use is insulin resistance. When you elevate insulin levels, your body becomes resistant to it. So the next thing you do is you increase your levels more to combat this. And you can see where there's an ever-changing cycle here. I use more, I get insulin resistant. I use more, I get insulin resistant. I use more. And eventually, you're on very high doses. This is what my loss does, or me loss, however you want to say his name. Um, I really don't agree with his insulin protocol because I've done it. I went to him to learn about it and, and I came away thinking this doesn't make fucking sense because he doesn't use anything to protect your insulin sensitivity. His idea is just to take more, take more, take more. Uh, and I got to the point where I could take 25 IUs of insulin post-workout, not eat a fucking thing, and it didn't touch the thighs. That's how resistance I'd become, resistant I'd become. No, I took high doses, I'm not denying that. But the principle's still the same. If you repetitively use insulin, you're going to become resistant to it. Now, there are ways you can run metformin and various other things to help this. And then your insulin level, will, low usage should be a lot lower. But here's the other kicker. When you ask people why do you use insulin, they talk about IGF-1, but they also talk about nutritional transit. They talk about partitioning and shuffling nutrients into the muscle. So what happens when you remove the insulin? If you've artificially increased the rate at which your body moves nutrition through the body, and your body's become dependent on that for its growth, 
So let's say you have got massive of insulin use. How are you going to sustain that when you remove the insulin? Because your natural systems can't, can't move nutrient that quickly or that efficiently. Chances are as well that you are going to be insulin resistant, so they're going to move it really like a fucking breeze block. They ain't going to move it at all. And then you have the risk that you're going to gain fat as well because you're insulin resistant. So how do you sustain the effect of insulin when you're not using insulin? Now, it's different with gear. Yes, gear accelerate the growth process. And that they do increase nitrogen retention and therefore protein synthesis is increased. But for the mass majority, we don't get to a size why gear use is necessary continuously. But that process isn't overly reliant on once you've sustained muscle mass and you've had it for a while, it isn't as overly reliant on the drugs to be supported. But if you alter the mechanism by which drugs are, by which food is absorbed and how it's shuttled into the cell and your body growth is reliant on that when you remove that you can't replace that you can't mimic that you can't get that same effect particularly when you're insulin resistant and so everything's working even slower It'd be a bit like coming off cycle, I'm not doing a PCT, but there isn't a PCT for insulin. Well, there is really, it's keto. If you want to do a PCT for insulin resistance, it's keto. So, wouldn't you be better concentrating on making that system as efficient as possible in your body naturally? So, being very conscious about protecting your insulin sensitivity, being very conscious about managing your own natural insulin levels uh, and protecting that so you maximize your nat body's natural ability to move nutrient through into the muscle uh, and therefore <coughs> it's sustainable or am i just being fucking nuts here it just doesn't make sense to me you know i see all these guys on insulin and growth and to be fair, the physiques don't reflect it. And that I've seen plenty of massive physiques built without insulin and growth. Uh, growth from a point of view of muscular growth, I don't rate it. I really don't. Improve recovery, improve sleep, improve health, low dose every other day, spot on. But that's the other thing, run growth all the time and you damage your insulin sensitivity again. So you actually cause a problem or create a problem for when you come off growth i've yet to see anyone make substantial muscular gains on just growth and insulin and everyone will say well yeah no you need gear as well and my argument is it's actually the gear and the gains that i have seen from growth and insulin when used in conjunction with gear, when the growth and insulin have been removed, the vast majority of the gains have gone. They don't seem to be sustainable. A lot of it is glycogen and water that's going into the muscle, and that's why they're not sustainable, because it's not muscle. People seem to get fat post-insulin use, and that's because of insulin resistance. Uh, and, and just because of the way the body's now shuffling nutrient. So, to me, you need to be very, very clever if you want to start fucking about with insulin and you need to manage it very, very well. But to be honest, guys, I just don't see a cause for it. And you know, if we spent as much time looking at how we could improve our training and how we could improve our diet, then we wouldn't need half the fucking drugs we use. It's it. Everybody researches hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours on drugs, and to some degree on nutrition as well. You know, we're generally not too bad there. You don't see that same effort going into training or training techniques. Uh, and I've harped on for years about 
my muscle connection uh, and complete fiber uh, recruitment and, and more feeling the movement uh, and engaging, still training hard and still pushing the envelope, but not being weight focused, being muscle stimulant focused. Um, now, JP starting to talk this way since he started talking to the guys in the States, mus muscle hypertrophy, whatever that th those people are. I'm not sure the, the name of the website that they call him, a guy called Joe. <coughs> and it's like, been on about this for fucking 10 years. You know, you spend more time getting your training. I mean, this is, this is, my big point is this. If you can't grow on training and food alone, then you shouldn't be taking gear. Or, no, that's wrong. That's wrong, I shouldn't be saying that. Not that you shouldn't be taking gear, that, because that's your personal choice, and I don't want to stand in judgment there, but that it's not optimal. Let me put it that way. Um, I don't really have the right to say to someone you can or can't take steroids because of whatever. Um, it's a free will, it's your choice. But how I can liken this is I'm going to lose weight, okay? I'm going to go on a diet. So uh, I want to be leaner. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to overly change my diet, but I'm going to start with T3 and T5. So I do 12 weeks, lose a couple of stone of fat. Buzzing, doing really well. And now I'm going to come off the T3 and T5. What's going to happen? Oh, yeah, I'm going to get fat. Why am I going to get fat again? Oh, because I never changed my diet. I relied on the drugs. All right. Okay, then. So I can't make any improvements naturally. Nothing at all. No. But I'm going to go on drugs. Then when I come off the drugs, having gained a stone and a half, I'm going to expect those gains to stay. Oh, hang on a minute. I've not sorted my diet or my training out. So now I'm going to lose that size because that size has come from drug use and not from foundations of quality training or diet. Oh, shit. No, I don't want to lose size. So I know. I'll blast cruise because you can't hold size anyway when you come off. You have to cruise. Well, hang on. If you're cruising, you're supposed to mimic natural levels. So that would be mimicking what your body would produce anyway. So why would that make any difference to retaining size? Oh, well, I recruise on 250 min a week. Oh, so you're on a very low cycle then. You're not cruising. No, 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 it's cruise. So, okay. So because your diet and training is shit, and you haven't got that to work for you, you're now a drug addict. No, I'm not. I'm not a drug addict. I'm stop any time. Come off gear then. Oh, well, I lose loads of size and I can't gain when I'm not on gear. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. Get my point. And yet that story is repeated with a vast majority of users. You can gain. You can maintain. But you have to make sure you sort your diet and training out. And that's not going to happen if you don't look at it. Every person I've ever coached has pretty much said, oh, my training's all right. And I don't cast judgment on that. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. But I just suggest that they might want to try it a different way. And every single one has gone, fuck There are, oh, and I'm still learning, I'm still experimenting. There are always more efficient ways. You should always be seeking to develop more efficient training. As we go through life and as our age changes and our size change, the way we need to train can change. <laughs> you know, and, and, and it's just something we need to look at. So uh, don't underestimate the power of lifting. Really? Seriously, don't? And uh, just 
the more effective you make your training and diet, the more responsive you will be when you go on drugs and protect your insulin sensitivity. It is probably one of the biggest things I see people fucking up, not just through, through drug use, but also through diet. And then they wonder why they don't gain. Someone contacted me, can't gain on his off-season diet anymore, doesn't know what's going on. Okay, when did the gain stop? Oh, a couple of weeks ago. Oh, okay. And what were you doing? Oh, I stopped using insulin. And so you're insulin resistant, and now you're just going to get fat, and that's where your gains are stopped. So we need to sort your insulin resistance out. So we need you to protect that. So guess what? You're going on keto. But you see my point here. You know, we need to protect these mechanisms, and we need to optimize these mechanisms. And that isn't always drugs. You know, I'm not going to say people have no right to use insulin and growth because that's their own personal choice. But what I am saying is for a lot of people, it's probably doing them more harm than good. It's probably holding them back more than it's actually benefit them. Uh, uh, and it's just unnecessary and expensive drug use. I mean, right, slim's cheap as fuck, but growth isn't. Growth low dose, no problem with it. No, honestly, no problem with it at all. I think it's great. Uh, high dose, don't see the point. And someone's going to go, well, all the pros says high growth this, high growth that. Yeah, okay. Fair enough. Yeah, we'll all quote Jay Cutler in that one sage where he says, the more the better. But I honestly, for firstly, you're not Jay Cutler. Secondly, you're not earning a living out of this shit. So I would question whether that is really worth it. You know? Get everything else working to the best of its ability. Then when you don't gain, then start looking at other things. And you know, honestly, you'll progress better and you'll be healthier and you'll last longer and you won't be like me. Fucked. <laughs> no. Um, just wanted to say... Um, it just, I just, it does. I see so many people using insulin and growth, and I'm just thinking, why? And most of them don't even understand how it works. Um, and they just don't manage it. And it's like, guys, leave it alone. You don't need it. You really don't. Why don't you spend that same amount of effort on fucking training? How many pages do you see on Facebook and forums that are dedicated to training? Uh, and yet, how many posts do you see on Facebook talking about drugs? But without training, we don't grow. You know? Uh, it's the starting point. So why is it so neglected? Because we all think we know how to train. I'm still learning. I remember things I forgot. I tried different tweaks or... Incorporate principles from one body part into another body part. Play, it's just experiment. Yeah, different times, different days, different fields, different results. So, my advice to you is focus more on that. Anyway, I'm going to go now. Um, so, I'll catch up with you guys fairly soon. Um, oh, no, no, I'll put that in another video. Okay, take care. Bye-bye.